I am your African queen, the girl of your dreams. Yeah. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to the Phoebe Way. My name is Phoebe. You're most welcome on this channel. We talk about life in Germany, you know, living here as an expat, as a black person, and all of that. Why are you asking yourself, why is this girl sitting here bare faced? Well, almost bare faced because my brows are done. But why is this girl sitting here and what's she going to talk about? So, in two of my previous videos, I talked about my trip to Vietnam and Cambodia as a black person, as a black German. And I also talked about, in one other video, I talked about how I had the worst racist encounter in my life. And I'm here to tell you about it today. I chose now because I'm actually getting ready to film this video. So if you wanna see what I'm wearing fully, wait till the end of the video, I'll show you the full outfit. But I'm going to work on IG Frank clothing. Um, the clothes she sent me, I'm about to shoot the, um, the content for that video and it's going to be about things I miss about Ghana. So if you have not yet subscribed, please do, 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 do. So that when I post that video in the upcoming weeks, um, I don't know when it will go up, but if I post that video, you would know um, what I miss about Ghana and you see what Ghana has to offer as well, because of course I'm Ghanaian. So I, um, I was surprised because there's really not much difference between Africans and Cambodians or Asians like especially Cambodians because the sun there is like really there and I didn't expect to see that kind of um, the heisters that kind of reaction or that experience I didn't expect it at all like it had come, if I'd come from the lighter skinned um, black people I would have been like okay I mean lighter skinned Asians like in Vietnam they are quite light like quite Caucasian with a skin tone so I wouldn't have been surprised and in Vietnam it was more like people were just like glaring at me just looking 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 at the time too they would actually be bold and they would walk up to me and say oh you have such brown uh, beautiful brown skin so beautiful and um, also my other features like my bomb people like were pointing at it and when I went to the spa I remember the lady was just she just kept talking about it but that was it so Cambodia let me get to the story before I just before I finish this makeup I've not even said anything <laughs> so Cambodia we got to Cambodia um I think it was the we left Vietnam or um Ho Chi Minh City I think it was the 2nd of January I think it was the 2nd of January so we got to Cambodia by the third and then we went up to Siem Reap where the Angkor Wat temples are so we went to the Angkor Wat temples and it was amazing like I've learned some of the pictures somewhere Angkor Wat was amazing balls like nothing went wrong there and then that was Siem Reap so that's the big city there and then we spent some time in Siem Reap and then after that we went to the city, the capital of Cambodia, what's that's Phnom Penh, and there we had probably booked a, a house. I don't remember if we booked it back in Germany or we booked it when we were in Siem Reap. I think we did it in Germany. Um, yeah, I think we did it in Germany. And then um, the hostel in Siem Reap was really good. If I remember the name, I would just um, put it here somewhere. He is so nice, he gives you the best tips and you know, he was just quite friendly and helpful. So obviously, we were already like um, pleasantly surprised because we didn't have that experience in, um, in Vietnam. So that was really, really nice. That was really good. And I was actually loving Cambodia more than Siem Reap because we had I mean, more than um, I was loving Cambodia more than Vietnam because we had this tuk tuk driver and he was amazing. Like he he took us everywhere and he would tell us there's another pagoda here, there's another temple there, there's a rice field here, there is um it was another field he took us to rice and lotus. 
I think it was Lotus. So yeah, he would take us everywhere. He took us every, basically really everywhere. And then I just need this to buffer in well, because yeah, he took us everywhere. And then um, we came to Phnom Penh and Phnom Penh, we got to Phnom Penh at night and we were so happy that actually we served a place, you know, because we got there and we took a bus, we took the bus, so we got there like quite late. And we're like, yes, we, at least we have um, some place to spend the night at. And it was the hostel. So we um, we got there and then he was like, it's $10. We, sh we should give him $10 for the TV remote, um, $10 for the TV remote, another deposit for the towels, which we're not going to use anyways because we had our own towels. So we went on to the room, we should go to our room. And then the first thing, I noticed was the bed had stains on it, like the bed sheets had stains and they were white. And I told my partner, like, mm -mm. just mach mal nicht. Der weg soon. And normally I don't really care. And then I asked for new ones and then it took a while, you know, he took one of the boys. And basically you can think about this, like, as if you're in Ghana and you complain and it's not even like, a real hotel where they'll be like, or hostel where they'll be like, okay, please wait. I'll have somebody attend to you whether they're in uniform or something. No, no. The boys were literally looking like street boys. You know, I'm not saying it's not condescending or to insult anybody, but that's what it looked. It didn't look like it was a structured thing. Unlike other places where you see that this is the boss and this is the person in charge and um, these people are like real employees and stuff. That's how it, it was that time. So, yeah. So that had that one had happened, and after he changed the sheets, the new ones had stains on them as well. And I was like, okay, you know what? I'm tired. We're both tired, so we'll just spend the night, and then by morning we'll look for a new place. So after like five six hours, I woke up to the stench. It was yeah, it's a stench. So this stench, I was like. What's this? And then it was coming from the bathroom. So it smells like mold. Mold and I we opened the window. I had my partner open the window. We opened the window. And then um after he opened the window, we realized that the way the window was, you can't even have air coming in, like real air, because you know how you have compound houses in in Nigeria or in Ghana and then um, that's how the house was built it was built like a compound house and if you're doing this kind of Airbnb hostel thing you would expect that the person would actually have like a real place conducive for visitors for foreigners and all of that but that wasn't the case so I was quite surprised and I was already pissed I woke up pissed I woke up angry so as we were planning our day, um, I took up my phone. And another thing too was the Wi-Fi wasn't really cooperating. And then on the wall, like he had written the TV station with, with markers, like he had written the TV channels with the marker on the wall. And I'm like, what kind of ghetto are we in? So yeah, that was what happened. So as I was, I took up my phone, checking my mails and stuff, I realized that um, Booking has sent us a mail that we hadn't shown up at the property, so they are charging us. I'm like, hold up, I am at the property, and I'm actually even not happy about the state of this uh, property because the prior place that I had booked in CM Reap, it was around the same price, and it was amazing, it was good, it was, ooh, I had nothing to say about it, you know? And at this point, we had been on the road for like six days for like a week, and we had changed, like the first time we arrived in Vietnam, we arrived in Ho Chi Minh City. Our hostel, um, we had to change because they were like, there was no room available. And then, so after Siem Reap, I was actually happy in Cambodia because things seemed to be going well. So, I was shocked and then I was angry again. I got even angrier, but I didn't say anything. I just sent them, um, pictures that I wear in the room and I'm actually not even happy but I haven't complained because there's not much they can do 
like at that point by the time they actually do something i'm gone so what's the point i didn't complain right and then i we went down to reception and i i even told him hey they said we are not here and he's like oh it must be a mistake somewhere and then we asked him um about the tuk-tuk because in our previous place in siem reap the proprietor, proprietor actually arranged a tuk-tuk for us so we were like tuk-tuk we went sightseeing that day um our driver wasn't as nice he was quite um you would say greedy and he wasn't really pleasant like our first one but that's another story for another day <laughs> and then we came to have dinner like we did a boat um cruise it was beautiful romantic everything we had dinner by this um famous um restaurant i think if you go to Phnom Penh or if you've been to Phnom Penh you know what i'm talking about there's this restaurant where you actually sit by like basically on the water and you're eating and it was so nice so we come back and we say hello we go up to our rooms and it was like around 10 p.m and so we got there and then i was getting ready for bed and everything we were both getting ready for bed and then this somebody just barges in who is it it's the owner okay let me start doing my eyes before this video gets too long so which color are we doing i think we'll go for something natural let's do as white up as so and then i was like why would you barge and he came in taking pictures you want to ruin my business i'm like which business this place is a shackle but <clears throat> I didn't say that out loud though. I was just thinking like, what's in the talk? Your place don't run down already. Like, don't make good room your business, I be. And then <laughs> he started taking pictures and I was like in like my pajama pants and everything. I was like, you cannot take pictures of me. And then we tried blocking like the lens of the phone camera and everything. And I was like, okay, you know what? I think we need to start moving because I don't feel safe. My partner agreed. We started packing our stuff. And we, we checked around and saw that some were available. So we we're like, okay, if there are other places available, we'll just go and, you know, check out what they can do for us. So that's what happened. This is now the juicy part of the story, or not juicy, but the main part. So we go downstairs and we say we are ready to go. We want to, we had, I think we had booked for two, three nights. We had only spent the first night. And the second night, let's say it's past 10 p.m. so you can keep the money. But the third night and my deposit, we want our money back. That's all we wanted. And he was like, he's going to have them check the room whether we have ruined something. <laughs> Red. I said, okay, let him go and check. And then as we were waiting, uh huh, what he said he's going to um he's going to deal with us. This um this cannot this is his country. That's one of the things that he said. This is his country. He's going to deal with us and a lot of things. He's slapping his finger and I was like, I'm actually going to go to the police and don't you even think that it is going to be just a Ghanaian embassy that's going to come for you. There's the German embassy that's going to come for you because I came here on my German passport. So I didn't even have a Ghanaian passport at that time. But that's what he was thinking because I was stuck. And that's how we people, I'm like, what are you saying? I'll also go and report to the police and he's not going to have it easier. So because how can you just barge room and taking pictures of a half-dressed woman? I'm not even going to say half-naked, but half-dressed woman because... I was wearing something but it was like light and short because i was about to sleep and it's you know that place is hot and he didn't have ac he only had like a standing fan another thing i imagine and that was like i'm going to report you for doing that and secondly for scamming us out of our money because if you had not reported that it was a no-show they wouldn't have told me that i have to pay and i've been able to send them proof that i'm at your property so why am i the one ruining your place if you hadn't said anything i wouldn't have complained i would have just been quiet i would have said anything whatsoever Augusta you know understand he's going to call his boys to beat us up I was like okay hmm. beat you up before you beat me up I want my ten dollars plus the rest he said he was not going to give us the rest it was just a deposit I said okay 
give me the, my person, let me bounce. I should be said like, give me my ten dollars, let me bounce. And then um, my partner was like, we are not here for any trouble. Just give us some money and we are leaving. Whatever you're doing, the rest fine. But give us our cash because it's not going to be fair to you. Like it's not, you are not being fair to us. And when I said I was going to call the police, he was like, you are nothing. I'm like, I'm nothing. Yes, you are nothing. Black people, you are nothing. Your skin, just as dirty as your heart. Mm. And as a woman, you're even nothing. What's the woman? This is Kampuchi, this is my country. And yet he slammed his palm on the counter. I was even surprised his, his palm did not break or burst. Like, for us, the way he just slammed his fist, I mean, his palm into the counter quite loud, just to intimidate us. And you cannot intimidate me. That's the thing. Unless I don't want to fight. So he's like, he called somebody on the phone speaking their language. And that's one of the reasons I, I love speaking other languages. I wish I had not understood what he had said. And he was just not bluffing. So we left. After he said that, I was like, you know what? You are here with a mini temple of Buddha and whatnot. And you want him to give you peace and everything. It will not happen. Uh -huh. You don't want me to be happy. I don't want you to be happy. It will not happen. That money is not coming this 2020. Yeah, that was 2020. January 2020. So, that was what happened. And I booked this hostel at booking.com. In all my 20-something years on earth, Nobody has actually been able to open their mouth to tell me that my skin color is dirty. Nobody has opened their mouth to tell me that my heart is as dark as my skin. <laughs> and I was surprised because it just caught me off guard. Like, seriously guys, when you go to Cambodia, the sun is quite strong there. So the kids there have a tan and everything. but. Before I went to Asia, I read about this colorism going on, like where they don't, they, um, they associate dark skin with um, poverty and not being good because those who work in the sun are obviously going to be those who are going to be dark and everything. But I didn't expect it to be this bad. Also because in Vietnam, I hadn't experienced it. People were more like welcoming. Either they are staring or they are telling you you're beautiful or they like your skin. So I didn't really see it like that until, mm, excuse me, <clears throat> until I actually went to Cambodia, right? I need this mirror. It is the best. I need this mirror for my eyeshadow. So, let me underscore so it's magnified yes so the reason why I was shocked was because as I said most of the kids had a tan even though I had read about it I hadn't been confronted with it so I kind of forgot about the, the whole thing and it just amazes me because he's dark himself and why do I have to bleach for you to respect me to be honest that's the impression I had and that night I cried I actually cried I don't cry um, for anything yes it doesn't count that I cry when the movie is sad that doesn't count that is just a test for my psychological test I call it but like it takes a lot for me to cry outside the movie theater so um, meets me on a regular day where I'm not watching a movie and I barely will cry. People do stuff to me and I just laugh, like really. My first reaction to pain is laughter and so for me to cry that day, it really got to me. So what happened next? How, how, were we, how did we get in safety? Um, we just packed our stuff. Thank God we're just backpacking actually, so that was what actually helped. Because if it was me on my regular trip with the suitcase, <laughs> it would have taken five years. <laughs> but we were backpacking, so basically we only had the necessary stuff outside. That's what helped. So yeah. So we backpacked our way out of there. My left side is always a pro. Is it just me? Is it just me? Get it. That's why I can't do people's makeup. 
kann only do myself. Ich hoffe, das stimmt irgendwie vom Winkel her. Das macht doch ein bisschen Sinn, oder? Und hier ist Kreis. Your girl is about to disgrace herself on camera. Anyways. Be quiet because my left side can be tricky. I have great respect for my left side. Okay. Oh, yes. Listen. My geometry teacher will be proud of me because I think the angles are right. Hiya. Oh, yeah. Let's feed it. Anyways, you have to help yourself. Life is short. Hype yourself. Hype yourself. Ah, I'm sure you guys want to see what I'm wearing, but I'll show you. Just stay tuned. There was another guest house that was called Willkommen, like in Dutch, not in German. I uh, was it Dutch or German? I think it was actually no, it was in Dutch. But we got there and the owner was there herself. She was the lady. And we told her what had happened, and she was like, you know what? You want to call the police? I will help you call the police. But that time I didn't even know what to do. Like, my partner was like, he wants us to call the police, let's do it, but let's do it from far away because your safety. And then, I initially wanted to call the police, but I was like, I don't speak the language, you know? He can say anything he wants, and before we know it, we actually been convicted in a strange land, so I don't even know the law there, like what they do and stuff. So, no, not in that camp. I'm going to use my black opal, um, black opal, um, foundation and my skin is currently really going through it with the mask knee, but I love black opal because it doesn't feel heavy on my skin and I've been using it like ever since I started wearing makeup since I was 17, so it's been over a decade, age, I've seen people my age. It's looking orangey on camera, but it's actually my skin tone, like seriously, this is what I've been using since I was of age you know oh forgot to add the lashes but i'll show you guys in a bit uh-huh so yeah that's what happened and what has has taught me is that we have to do a lot of um education like in the black community itself that black is beautiful. Look at what happened in South Africa this week, where this younger girl has been killed because she had actually stood up for herself and wrote, written on Facebook that we are all beautiful but in different ways and the bullies didn't like it. They actually planned to um, beat her up. Can you imagine? Can you actually imagine? Somebody's child, you want to beat her up. It's quite sad that we, we are being taught that lighter is more beautiful. You have to lighten up your skin. You know, away from the Cambodia thing, I'm going to leave the Asians to themselves because I don't know much about them and why they are like this. The people I really want to talk to are my black Africans, my black people of African descent. Like, please, especially being an immigrant here we are seeing a lot of these bleaching and everything going on i understand why many people do it but you have to know that black is beautiful enough you don't have to do anything to change it don't let anybody lie to you that you have to be their shade their preferred shade before they like you or something no and I talked to booking.com after this. I actually posted a tweet about this issue. I actually did. And then they called me after numerous emails. And the thing is, I don't see his um, hostel listed anymore. So I guess they did take him off. Because you can't be running such a thing where a lot of foreigners come and you're going to be racist like how do you want people to feel okay how it's Johnny. i'm glad i gave it to him i'm really glad i did i gave it to him 
I was like, you know what, who raised you? And also another thing too was like, you don't come in and you don't ex respect my privacy. And I was like, it could be your mother, your sister. Oh, that even sparked him. I shouldn't talk about his mother, sister or daughter. I said, okay, fair enough. I, don't, I didn't understand that. But the thing is, your mother, sister, everything, they'll be treated worse elsewhere if you treat other people's mother, sister, daughters outside like this. It is, that, like, that's what it's, it's going to be, you know? That's just what it's going to be. So, yeah. Oh, that was easy. And just like the smuggish. I'm losing daylight. Come on. Who's that girl? -na 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 -na. Me, that girl. Ooh. I guess baby. Mama bought me way. Hmm. Mama, Mama really did bought me well. Like she bought me wella. Chai. Sala hmm. I'm really feeling myself. Thank you, Bow Beauty. Hmm. Put some color to depict my happiness today. So as you can see. Let us love ourselves. Be loved, let us love. Mm. I need to use a different lipstick today. I wanted to do red, but it wouldn't go with my out feet. Ah. Mm. Mm. Tastes so good, I mean smells good. It smells literally like caramel. Mm. I got the knee. This will set it. I'm being, I will set on now. I will set on. So guys, as you can see, as I was telling you the story, I was just transforming myself into an African beauty because I'm proud of my dark skin. I wouldn't give the skin for any, in fact, as a matter of fact, let me add some shine. Let me add some shine. Let me add some shine. <laughs> let me add some, look. You see, you see, you see how it's glowing? You see how the skin is glowing? Ah! This is a message out there to you. It says, embrace your skin. However it is, it's beautiful. It's made for you, okay? Only you can rock it. So rock it. So that was my story in Kombucha. But if you still want to go, confront them <laughs> with your black beauty. Confront them.
let us see. Let us see that we don't care. It, it can't, like, the fact that you are not, you don't want me to feel good doesn't mean I'm going to stay out of you. No, 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 no. I will explore the world. I will be there taking my pictures because I'm a black queen and that's it. And if I work for it and my money says I can go, why are you to stop me? I'm coming. Hmm. Now let me use my favorite one, the elf, because this, this is kind of bit, it's not giving me the baba boom if Bola. Bo. Ah. Eh, eh, jina, jina, no. Eh, eh, ke mnuchi. Ako ma swa jinyo. So, basically, get that color bone again. Hmm. Yeah. So, guys. <clears throat> basically, that is what happened. And at this point, I just want to encourage you. Don't let anybody get you down. You are beautiful. You are capable of doing anything that you set your mind to. And um, racism is everywhere. That doesn't mean that it's supposed to be there, no. But let's educate our friends. Let's educate our children. Let's educate our family members. And let them know that it's not a good thing to do, okay? It is actually quite dumb. Especially within us blacks, that we say this one is lighter, honey, 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 what, honey, honey, chocolate, and dark chocolate, and it's better to be honey than dark. And what? Please, stop it, stop it. Okay, let's embrace every black, every dark skin, everybody as they are. Thank you for coming today. Thank you for watching my video. Please take good, good care of yourselves. And I promise you, I'll show you the outfits. So I will show you the outfits. Take good care of yourselves, my people, and I'll see you same time next Sunday. I am your African queen, the girl of your dreams. Yeah. <laughs>